Once upon a time. Musician Goat was playing his flute under a tree. The beautiful tunes coming out of the flute filled the animals in the forest with joy. I was really having a bad day, but the soothing melody of the flute calmed me down. <sighs> I was feeling sad. I wanted to cry, but as soon as I heard the flute's melody, I feel at peace now. <sighs> The melody from Musician Goat's flute relaxed everyone in the forest. All the animals were sleepy. What's going on? Why is everyone so sleepy? The flute's notes didn't affect the wolf because he was indifferent to music. Hmm, I think this flute is magical. <laughs> if only I can get my hands on it. <laughs> you play a magic flute, I see. What a silly thing to say! I just love my flute! When the music stopped, everyone woke up and started yawning. will be very rich! Everyone freeze! This is a magic flute. I will make you fall asleep if you take one more step. Really? How is that a magic flute? How can it be? Friends, the flute isn't magical. Music Goat is talented, so he plays it beautifully. Yes, it's all musician's talent. Stop this nonsense at once, Wicked Wolf. Give the flute back to the musician. We want to continue listening to his beautiful music. I will show you now. I will be the king of the jungle. Wow. <laughs> hey, what's happening? What is that sound my ears heard? This flute is broken. I don't want it. You can take it back.
Did you say it was broken, huh? <sighs> Mommy! Once upon a time, Athlete Goat went camping in the mountains. She wanted to climb higher than usual. The weather was perfect for climbing. Athlete Goat had all her climbing gear ready. She knew it was time to start her ascent. As Athlete Goat started climbing, she didn't notice a pair of eyes peering from afar. You little brat! How dare you climb higher than anybody else! I will climb much faster than you do, and once I get to the top, I'll plant my flag there. Hey you! Hey, hey, hey kiddo! You think you can climb higher than anyone else? Batwolf, what are you doing here? Get down or you will fall. You can't climb with those slippers. Don't! <laughs> Don't be silly! If you can climb, I can too! He started climbing, but he ignored the goat's advice. He wasn't wearing appropriate climbing shoes. This is so easy! Can't you see? I can do it! <laughs> Wolf, even though you're evil and wicked, I don't want you to get hurt. Listen to me. If you're not an athlete like me, then... Blah, blah, blah! I can't hear you! The wolf thought that if anyone should reach the top, it should be him. He was so eager to reach the mountaintop that he wasn't careful. He lost footing and started falling. Athlete Goat reacted quickly and caught the rope before it snapped. Help! 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 Help me! Athlete Goat! I'm holding the rope. Don't be scared, Wicked Wolf. Start climbing. I'll pull you up. Uh, okay, okay. Pull me up, pull me up, I'm scared. Be careful, the summit is very narrow and you might fall. <laughs> you fool! I've made it! I've made it to the top before anyone else! Yippee! Ah! Athlete Goat made it to the top and planted her flag. Favorite slippers are gone. <laughs> you did it again, wicked wolf. You'll never learn. 
Wait for me. I'll save you. Come on! Download our game now. Collect the apples and create your own Snow White style. Once upon a time, Wicked Wolf was wandering through the forest. While doing so, he thought of a clever idea. But to carry out his plan, he needed help. Stylish? Stylish! Hey, hey, Stylish, where are you? The wolf entered Stylish's house and found her designing new clothes. <laughs> Can you make a chicken costume for me? A coat with chicken feathers? Or a hat with a comb? No, 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 a, a chicken costume. I need it for a party that I'm attending. Stylish got suspicious of the wolf's request. I haven't heard anything about a party. Where will it be? Well, um, it's, uh, it'll be downtown, but, uh, but it's only for wolves. Oh, okay, I'll do my best then. Stylish goat worked day and night collecting chicken feathers in the coop. After some hours, she finished sewing the costume. Wow! It's really beautiful! I look like a chicken! <laughs> you don't look so fashionable, but if this is what you wanted, then... No, no, it's wonderful! I bet not even a rooster could tell me apart from the rest of the chickens! Rooster? Uh... Did I say rooster? No, 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 I meant my wolf friends. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I think you're up to something, but I have a plan too. The wolf went home. When it got dark, he put on the costume and snuck into the coop. He was going to trick the chickens and steal their eggs. The wolf got inside the coop, but the chickens weren't there. Uh, I didn't need to costume after all. Anyway, those eggs are mine. What are you doing, Miss Chicken? <laughs> hmm, uh, I was going to warm up the eggs. Uh, they, they couldn't get cold. We don't want strange chickens in here, okay? <laughs> Yikes! I'm leaving! D don't get upset! <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> <laughs> Silly wolf, did you think you could fool me? That's right, run, run away! <laughs> Once upon a time, the artist goat was crying under a tree.
What's the matter, Kit? The wind blew my painting away, and now it's stuck way up the tree. This? Yes. Can you get it for me? At that moment, the wolf had a wicked idea. I'll get it down for you, but in return, you'll make me invisible. The artist goat gave it some thought and came up with an idea. I want no one to see me. Okay, okay. Hold still. Artist Goat painted the wolf so well, no one could tell him apart from the wooden barn wall. Look, no one can see you now. The wolf was extremely happy, so he immediately went to the chicken coop. Wolf's plan worked very well, as nobody could see him. So he took the eggs one by one. When the wolf opened the coop door, even the artist goat couldn't see the wolf as he blended with the wooden door. Oh no! I think I did something wrong. Wolf's leaving with the eggs. The artist goat went to see the dog right away and told him everything. Wolf, where do you think you're going? Why do you have all these eggs in your hands? Who? Me? Well, you, you can see me. Don't be so sure. What about the tail of yours in the back? And the eggs back. Now, now. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was just like a prank. And I'll show you a prank too after I put these eggs back in their place. Once the dog put all the eggs back, he started chasing the wolf. My best painting! With the sun setting on the horizon and the dog chasing the wolf, the artist goat got inspired and created another painting. Come on! Download our game now! Collect the apples and create your own Snow White style! Once upon a time, three little pigs named Honky, Ponky and Minky lived happily with their mother in their home. One day, they came across a job posting in the park. The job entailed raking leaves in the park. Minky, the youngest and smartest brother, said excitedly, Mommy, we saw a job posting. Please, let us work half a day in the park tomorrow. While their mother considered their request, Honky and Ponky started dancing around her, making funny gestures. Begging her, Minky joined them too. Please, Mommy, please, let us work! 
After giving it some thought, their mother agreed. Well, OK. The three brothers were so excited. They chose their clothes for the following day, took a bath and went to bed early. Early in the morning, they went to the park. The custodian let them know their shift would end in the evening. They got their brooms and started to work. Brothers, let's each take a corner and start raking, working our way in. Meanwhile, a pair of eyes watched the pigs from behind the bushes. It was none other than the wicked wolf. The wolf devised a plan to thwart the piglets from finishing their job. I'll teach you little pigs. You will never be able to rake those leaves because I sent more your way after I blow them off the tree. <laughs> you will see. The wicked wolf climbed the tree and started to blow the leaves. Honky kept raking the leaves but didn't see what the wicked wolf was doing. Too many leaves! The more we rake, the more they appear! Stop whining and rake away! We have little time left! The three brothers got back to work. Meanwhile, the wolf was going from tree to tree, shaking branches so the leaves would fall. He got to the tree next to Ponky. I'll blow all the leaves! Ponky could not understand why the pile of leaves wouldn't lessen. Then the wicked wolf jumped onto the tree next to Minky. I'll blow and make all the leaves fall on your head. The leaves fell like raindrops. Minky looked up and saw the wicked wolf blowing through the branches, making the leaves fall. He rubbed his eyes, thinking he had been under the sun for too long and was seeing things. But the wolf was still there, jumping from one branch to the next, making the leaves fall. Minky called his brothers immediately. Look up at the trees! The piglets were surprised. So they devised a plan right away. We are not afraid of... The Wicked Wolf! And they started to shake the tree where the wolf had climbed. The wolf managed to jump to the next tree. On the apple tree! Ah! 
This time, they started to shake the apple tree. The wolf got dizzy from all the shaking, lost his footing and fell to the ground. I'm not done with you yet. We'll, we'll meet again. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's getting late. We have very little time left. The park is about to close and there are leaves everywhere. The three little pigs started to rake the leaves, even though they were worried. I've got a brilliant idea. This is how we do it. They rubbed the mastic tree sap. And put it on the rake tines. Thus, the leaves stuck. And they could gather more leaves in a short time. In half an hour, they gathered all the leaves in the park. They took a deep breath when they finished. On their way home, the three little pigs decided to buy a gift for their mother and surprise her. They wanted to buy a necklace, but even after putting their money together, it was not enough. If we can't afford a necklace, let's buy a nice cake from the bakery. They happily ate the cake and rubbed the frosting on each other's noses. Now tell me, children, did you have fun working? It was fun, Mom. A little tiring, but we still had a lot of fun. The leaves were so colorful and beautiful. They looked so nice as they fell to the ground. But it was funnier watching the wolf falling from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> the three little pigs, Honky, Tonky and Minky, lived in the forest with their mother. That afternoon, their mother warned the piglets before going to her neighbours. My darlings, do not leave the house in my absence and do not open the door to anyone. The piglets enjoyed spending time at home. Honky listened to music. Honky read comics. And Minky tried new recipes in the kitchen. Suddenly, Minky dropped the bowl as he stood frozen before the calendar in the kitchen. When his brothers heard the noise, they rushed to the kitchen. What's wrong, Minky? Guys, today's mom's birthday! Whoa, her birthday? How do we forget? She never forgets our birthday! Our dear mother! <laughs> Don't cry! We'll organize a surprise party for her! Meanwhile, somebody was listening behind the door. It was the Wicked Wolf. So, you're going to have a surprise party. <laughs> I have a surprise for you too. <laughs> Let's make an arrangement now. Honky, you go to the forest and gather flowers. Punky, you go to our neighbor and tell her to stall mom until the evening. And I'll bake the birthday cake! Before Ponky set off, 
The wicked wolf went to the neighbour's house, where the piglet's mother had gone. When Ponky saw the wolf at the door, he immediately called out to him. Wolf, get out of the door! I have to talk to the neighbour! I can't, Ponky! I started working here and I was told to never leave the door. You can tell me. I let her know. Punky hesitated, but in the end, he believed the wicked wolf. I need to tell our neighbor to stall my mother. We have a surprise for her and we don't want her to come home right away. Okay, Punky. I'll give her the message. You can go home now. Ponky trusted the wolf and headed home. Then the wolf went looking for Honky. Who was in the forest picking flowers. Honky put the colourful flowers he had gathered in a basket. The wicked wolf stealthily grabbed all the flowers from the basket. I will pluck all the petals from your flowers. He then put the plucked flowers back in the basket. Honky came back with more flowers and was surprised to see the flowers he had picked had no petals. He grabbed his basket and went home. The wolf also went to the little pig's house. Minky listened to Ponky while he made the cake frosting. He put it on the windowsill to cool. Of course he lied to you! How could you trust the wicked wolf? The wolf took the frosting sitting on the window and ate it. After Honky came home, the three brothers realised the wolf was up to no good, so they devised a plan. They went up to the roof of the house and shouted, Wolf! Where are you? Come out! Wolf! It's too bad we didn't invite him to the party. Yo, we should have. Too bad. The wolf, hiding in the bushes, was surprised to hear this. Oh, you make me cry, dear pigs. <laughs> dear piglets, you are so kind and so thoughtful. We couldn't have a birthday without you. You're here now. But we're missing the birthday cake. As the wolf ran towards them, they poured a sack of flour on the wolf's head from the roof. You also need eggs for the cake. Here, here. Next comes frosting. What's a cake without frosting? I'm going to add one more thing. This will do it. A nice wolfy strawberry cake. Hooray! The cake is ready. Let's eat. You will pay for this. I'll make you pay for this. <laughs> Alas, we have very little time left. 
Let's make the cake right away! The three brothers went into the kitchen. Honky kneaded the dough, Punky washed the fruits, and Ninky whipped the frosting. Because the three brothers worked together, they were able to bake the cake quickly. Since they only had a few flowers left, they decided to shower their mother's head with petals. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Mommy, we love you! Happy birthday! You're so beautiful and very sweet! We love you so much! My dear children, thank you very much. You made me very happy. Don't forget to make a wish! What did you wish for, Mommy? I cannot tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Download our game now! Collect the apples and create your own Snow White style! Nia lived a happy life with her grandfather and her beloved dog, Hopi. Meanwhile, a new witch was wandering in town. I will avenge my sister. No one will get away with it. You're right. You need a Snow Queen to take revenge and spread evil. That Mia girl, wasn't she my sister's former Snow Queen? She used to instill fear wherever she went. Yes, she was just as bad as you back then. I must find another Snow Queen, one like her. Why shouldn't Mia be the Snow Queen again? Yes, why not? That's a great idea. I must make Mia my Snow Queen. I have an excellent plan. Listen carefully. The witch shared her plan with the crow. Great! But this was my idea, so I want a reward. Ha 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 ha! I need to get to work immediately. Hey, give me my reward! Don't leave me here! You can't be of any good to me! Go away, Crow! There are no rewards for you! You'll see, evil witch! I wish I hadn't told you anything! The witch took action without wasting any time. Get ready for a beautiful storm! Let's get in, Mia. It looks like a big storm is coming. Come here, Poppy. We have to get in. As soon as Mia and her grandfather entered the house, a big storm started. Outside. Don't worry, it will be over soon. Our roof! This can't be happening! We should repair the roof first. That's it! Now her grandfather must go to the forest to find a tree to get wood. Don't worry, Mia. I'll be right back. In the meantime, you can clean up the garden. Here it comes. Come closer, old man. What are you doing in the middle of the road? I dropped my fruits. Can you help me pick them up? Sure. Let me help you. Here you go, old man. Nighty-night. What's going on? <sighs> the witch's trick had worked. She took Mia's grandfather and imprisoned him in an old mill. 
Leave me out, witch. What do you want from me? You're just a prisoner. But I do need your granddaughter, Mia. Ha 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 ha. Don't you dare touch Mia. <laughs> My grandfather's late. I wonder if something happened to him. Poppy, I better go check. <coughs> Mia made her way to the forest right away. My grandfather was supposed to be here. What is that? Are you looking for someone, Snow Queen? Snow Queen? How do you... Wait a minute! Where's my grandfather? What did you do to him? Your grandfather is fine for now, but he will be my guest for a while. What do you want from my grandfather? Let him go, right now! I'll do it on one condition. You will become the Snow Queen again and work for me. If you refuse, you'll never see your grandfather again. Your old magic tricks don't work on me. <laughs> it can't be. This witch is very powerful. If you want to see your grandfather, I'll be waiting for you at the ice castle. You have two hours or you can forget about your grandfather. Mia went to the castle to save her grandfather. So the witch started working on her plan. So you came. I have a nice treat for you. Don't bother. Where is my grandfather? You're not in a position to give me orders right now, Mia. Once you drink this potion, you will become the Snow Queen again. Then I will let your grandfather go. What if I don't drink it? If you don't drink it, I'll turn your grandfather into an old tree and it will stay that way forever. Do you promise to let my grandfather go if I do as you say? Of course. I want to see you as my snow queen when I come back. <laughs> Mia was desperate, so she was about to drink the potion. Don't drink it! The witch is lying! She'll never free your grandfather! What do you mean? Even if you turn into the Snow Queen, she will never let go of your grandfather! Then I'll just go and save my grandfather. Yes, I think you should do so. Come on now! I know a secret exit in the garden. So you're trying to run away, huh? Let me go! Don't even bother. Your spells won't go through my spell shield. You'll stay in the cold until you change your mind. Crow, go into town. Get these herbs and bring them back immediately. Whoa! I'm hungry! Will you help me if I give you these kernels? Is it corn? But the witch will turn me into a stone. But I'm so hungry. Okay, maybe I can help a little? I want you to find my friend Gerda and tell her I'm imprisoned here. Okay, will you give me more corn? Another handful if you help me find my friend and bring her here. Consider it done. Let's see if the crow finds Gerda on time to save Mia from the witch. You can find out by watching our story, The Witch's Trap. Mia, who had fallen prisoner of the witch, asked the crow to inform her friend Gerda. Don't worry, I'll find your friend. I hope he can find Gerda. The crow flew over the mountains, glided across the countryside and finally reached Gerda's house. 
This must be the house Mia described. Hi, you must be Gerda. I brought you news from your friend Mia. Yes, I'm Gerda. Who are you? Did something happen to Mia? I came from far away and I'm hungry. Could you give me some food? Sure, here we go. Now tell me, did something happen to Mia? Um, your friend needs your help. Um, she's in the ice castle. The witch got her. Um. But that's impossible. After drinking the potion of goodness, the witch was gone. It's not the witch that drank the potion of goodness. Her sister is the one who caught Mia. Alas, this is terrible news. I must save Mia at once. The witch is in the castle. How am I going to save Mia while she's there? I'll get you in. Don't worry. Will you help me? Yeah. If I help you, your friend will have to give me corn. The crow went to the witch and said that a fat rabbit was in the trap in the forest. Mmm, I'm going to have rabbit stew tonight. Excellent. I tricked the witch and sent her into the forest. You must hurry up. Gerda quickly came to Mia's side. Mia, I'll get you out of here now. Gerda, I'm so glad you came. The crow also told Gerda how to neutralize the magic that the witch had cast on the cage. Here you go. Thanks for your help. Hooray! Corn! Let's get out of here before the witch returns. We can't go. We have to find my grandfather first. What do you mean? The witch imprisoned your grandfather too? Yes, but I don't know where she jailed him. If I don't agree to be the Snow Queen, she'll turn my grandfather into a tree. Then we better start looking for your grandfather. Hurry! The witch may return at any moment. The witch checked all the traps in the forest, but when she saw that they were all empty, she was outraged. There are no rabbits here. What is this crow up to? Mia and Gerda couldn't find Mia's grandfather in the ice castle. Not here either. We looked everywhere we could look. Are you sure the witch brought Grandpa to the castle? I know the witch has him, but I didn't see where she took him. Crow, do you know where Mia's grandfather is? I don't know where the witch is keeping your grandfather. Far away in the old mill, the poor old man was desperately waiting to be rescued. There is only one solution left. What's in your mind? We must trap the witch and make her talk. This is the only way we can find out where my grandfather is. The witch is very dangerous. How do we do this? A little magic will do the trick, don't worry. What is this? Sleeping magic! While Mia and Gerda talked, the witch's angry voice echoed in the ice castle. Crew, come here at once. I'll show you what it's like to fool me. Oh no! The witch is calling me. Girls, I must leave. See you around! <laughs> While searching for the crow, the witch passed by Mia's cage. The girl's gone. 
Or is the crow playing a trick on me? If so, that crow has nowhere to run. But first, I have to find Mia. Hey, witch! Are you looking for Mia? Who are you? What are you doing here? Or... Oh, psst! I'm here! Here you go! Meet the sleep magic! Uh. <coughs> What's this? The witch fell asleep under Mia's magic spell and Mia and Gerda locked her in the dungeon of the ice castle. When the witch woke up, she was furious. Untie me at once! I will make you regret this. You're not going anywhere until you tell me where my grandfather is. I will never tell you that. Do you think you can scare me with your threats? You have no choice. I can also use my magic on you to learn my grandfather's whereabouts. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop! Wait, I'll tell you! <laughs> Don't tickle me! <laughs> I imprisoned your grandfather in the lumberjack's cabin on top of the waterfall! Tell the truth! <laughs> I'm telling the truth! <laughs> Don't do this magic anymore! <laughs> I can't let you go until I'm sure you're telling me the truth! So what are you waiting for? Go look! I can't laugh anymore! I'll blindfold for you until I get back. I don't want you to do some magic and escape. Hey! Take it off! I can't see anything! Keep an eye on the witch, Gerda. Let's make sure she doesn't try to escape. Mia quickly went to the lumberjack's cabin atop the waterfall. Here it is! I hope my grandfather is inside. My grandfather's not here! The witch lied! She sent me here on purpose. Oh, Gerda! I must return to the castle immediately! Gerda? Gerda, are you okay? What happened? The witch escaped, Mia. I don't understand how it happened. A light hit me, and when I woke up, there was no witch. Let's see if Mia can find the witch and save her grandfather. You can find out by watching our story, The Snow Queen Potion. Come on, download our game now. Collect the apples and create your own Snow White style. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in a faraway land, there lived a king. This king had twelve daughters. All his daughters were incredibly beautiful. The king did not allow them to leave the palace. They were only allowed to walk around the palace gardens. While the king and his daughters carried on with their lives, one morning as his daughters sat at the table for breakfast, oh. he noticed that their shoes were worn out. Although the king was very confused by this, he ordered his servants to buy new shoes for all his twelve daughters. Ever since that day, every morning at breakfast, the king noticed that his daughter's shoes were worn and dirty. The king couldn't put his finger on what was going on. Despite their doors being locked at night, the mystery of the worn-out shoes continued. To solve this, the king came up with a very clever plan. Soldiers, spread the news across the country. Whoever solves this problem will marry one of my daughters and become king when I die. These young men only have three days to find out why my daughter's shoes are worn out every morning. However, if they can't figure it out, they will be thrown in the dungeon. 
The soldiers spread the news across the entire country. Many young men were turning up at the palace gates to solve this mystery. Yet, all of them were falling asleep outside the daughter's room and were being thrown into the dungeon. There was a kind, handsome young man who lived in a village near the palace. He had always liked the king's youngest daughter. The young man had no family except for his grandmother. So they lived together. One day, his grandmother came up with an idea. Why don't you try your chance at solving this mystery? You always said that you liked the king's youngest daughter. Until now, hundreds have gone to the palace to try their chance. None of them have succeeded. It will be impossible for me too. Plus, we're very poor. The king will never give his daughter in marriage to me. You must be mad, Grandma. Nonsense. You do what I say. You will succeed. I'm giving you a magical cloak that belonged to your father. Oh. When you wear this, you will become invisible. And one more thing, do not eat or drink anything from the palace. Good luck, my son. Although the young man was incredibly amazed by the invisible cloak, he immediately set off to the palace to try his chance. The guards led him to the princess's rooms, just like the others who tried their chance before him. At night, the oldest daughter popped a sleeping pill into a glass of water, left the room and handed the glass to the young man waiting by the door. It's hot. You must be thirsty. Here. If you like, I can bring you another glass. Thank you. Yes, I was incredibly thirsty. The thirsty young man <laughs> drank the water and slept all the way till morning. The next day, while waiting, another girl brought a glass of lemonade. Unable to resist, the young man drank this too. He went straight to the room assigned to him and snored the night away. When he woke in the morning, he said, How stupid I am! How could I believe these girls? My grandma had warned me about not eating or drinking anything. Tonight is my last night. I must succeed. He went in front of the door again. This time one of the girls wanted to trick him with juice. The young man pretended to drink the juice while the girl watched, but the minute she turned around and entered her room, he poured it into a plant pot. He pretended to sleep lying next to the plant and snoring. Go and take a look. Has the boy outside fallen asleep? One of the girls peeked through the door and checked the young man. Can't you hear? He's snoring away. It's okay. We are free now. At midnight, when the young man wore the cloak, he became invisible. He slowly entered the girl's room. The girls were wearing beautiful dresses. They had brushed their hair and were all made up. There was a large mirror in their room. They all stood in front of it. The oldest daughter touched the mirror and blew a kiss. The mirror immediately slid to the side and a door with stairs appeared leading down to a chamber. The young man watched in shock as the girls, Ooh. one by one, went down the stairs. Of course, he followed them right away. As he went down the stairs, he accidentally tripped on something, <gasps> fell and held on tight to the skirt of one of the princesses in front of him. Oh, what is that? Someone's pulling on my skirt. There's no one here. You must be imagining things. They went down hundreds of stairs. Whoa. Finally, they arrived in a forest. The leaves in the forest were gold, the branches were silver, and the top of the trees were filled with diamonds. As the young man watched in awe, he also took one of each item to keep. He wanted evidence upon his return. 
They walked and walked down a very long path through the forest. At the end of the road, a lake appeared before them. There were exactly 12 boats waiting for the princesses. While each one of them climbed on the boats, young oarsmen were helping them get in. Finally, the young man jumped into the last boat. Gosh, this boat is a little heavier than usual today. It's like it's carrying three people. Have you gained weight, princess? What? A palace decorated with magnificent lights appeared on the opposite shore of the lake. Music could be heard from everywhere. They all entered this palace and began to dance like crazy with their companions. <laughs> all the glasses in the palace were made of crystal and all cutlery made of silver. Ooh. As the young man watched this fantastic event, he wanted to eat a piece of cake and drink some water. He wasn't noticed while he was eating a piece of cake from a golden plate, but was caught while drinking water from the crystal glass. Oh wow, I can't believe it. Look there, the glass is levitating. It's like someone is drinking water. Upon hearing these screams, the young man dropped the glass and it shattered into a million pieces. You're imagining things. We are really tired of dancing. You must have bumped into the glass. Come on, it's almost morning. Let's go back to the palace. But, but... It was time for the girls to return to the palace. The oldest daughter gathered all her sisters. They returned to the palace the same way they came in, with the young man following them at all times. <laughs> the young man was thrilled to have solved the mystery of the shoes. He immediately appeared before the king. Your Majesty, I respectfully salute you, Your Highness. I have solved the mystery of why your daughter's shoes are worn out after just one day. Every day, your daughters go to a magical forest, head to a palace, and... Dance the night away! This is why their shoes are worn out! The king was shocked at this news and didn't want to believe what he heard. Today was your last day. How could I know that you're not lying to me in order not to get thrown in the dungeon? Sir, I have plenty of evidence. A silver tree branch, a gold leaf, a food made of diamonds and a crystal glass. Oh. The king was surprised at what he saw but was also pleased that the mystery was finally solved. He followed the young man down the path, went to all the places they had been, and saw with his own eyes that the young man was telling the truth. Yes, you were right. Tell me, which of my daughters do you want to marry? Your Majesty, if she also accepts, I would like to marry your youngest daughter. And of course, if you see fit. The young man and the young princess lived happily ever after. The young man also had his grandmother brought to the palace, since he owed her everything. Even though the other girls weren't so pleased with what had happened, they promised that they would never go anywhere again without permission. Once upon a time, there lived a carpenter named Geppetto. His wood carvings were very much appreciated by everyone. This carpenter, who was very skillful in his work, loved to make puppets from wood. His shop was filled with these puppets. Sometimes he would sell these puppets and sometimes he would gift them to children. His biggest wish was to have a child. My dear God, if only I had a child that could play with these toys I make. He could also be a companion to me in the long winter nights. One day, he went to the forest. He was looking for the appropriate wood for the new puppet he was going to make. This is just the wood I'm looking for. Solid but soft enough to carve. I can easily make the nose, mouth and arms out of this. 
It's going to be a wonderful puppet. He placed the log he had found on his shoulders and headed back to his shop and placed it on his counter. Got to work. Suddenly, he heard a sound. Ow! Oh. Where's this voice coming from? He continued carving again. Ow! I think I'm dreaming. This sound can't be coming from the log. I must be imagining things. Thinking that the voice had come from outside, Geppetto continued working. With great patience and thoroughness, he finished the puppet's head, body, arms and legs. He was admiring his work. What a beautiful puppet it turned out to be. But it needs clothes and shoes. He dressed his puppet with the children's overalls and shoes that he had in the shop. It turned out to be such a lovely boy, he placed the puppet on his table. Since I don't have any children, I can be friends with this puppet. I've even got a name for him. Yes, Pinocchio it is. Your name shall be Pinocchio, little puppet. He started to clean his counter, but just then heard a sound behind him. Good evening. He turned around, but there was no one except the puppet. He continued cleaning. Hello, Father Geppetto. Suddenly, Pinocchio jumped from the table to the floor. He started wandering around the shop. My God! Pinocchio the puppet has come to life. Surprisingly, his eyes wide open, he was watching him. Pinocchio wasn't human, but he was talking, walking and playing. Days and weeks passed. Geppetto was so happy. Pinocchio never left the carpenter's shop. He would help him with all his work and at night, they would sit and chat by the fireplace. Pinocchio, can you pass the saw? Of course, father. Pinocchio, where are the nails? Right here. This way, they lived happily for a couple of years. It was time for Pinocchio to go to school. But they had no money to buy a notebook, a pencil or a school bag for him. Geppetto had a watch that belonged to his father. He brought this watch to an antique shop, sold it and gave all the money to Pinocchio. Pinocchio, this is your money, but I'm giving it to you to buy the things you need for school. Go and buy yourself a notebook, a pencil and a school bag and head straight to school. Pinocchio put all the money in his pocket and headed for school. As he was looking at the shops on his way, people noticed him and were staring. What a strange child with a wooden puppet look, they said. After some time, a huge colourful tent appeared before him. There was a crowd at the door, giving money and going in. With curiosity, he came to the door. There was a clown at the door making people laugh and taking the people who gave him money inside. Sir, what is this tent? What's inside? Can I go in? This is a circus! You can't go in if you don't have money. He remembered the money in his pocket, which his father had given him to go to school. I have money. Here you go. He went in. Inside, there was someone on stage that was making the puppets talk and dance. These are puppets just like me! With the happiness of seeing someone just like him, Pinocchio jumped onto the stage. The puppeteer that noticed him screamed in shock. Oh my god, this puppet moves all by himself. I'm going to make so much money out of him. Ha 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 ha!
Hey, little one, come here. There's an amazing animal show inside. Do you want to watch? Really? I sure would. Where? In this room? Pinocchio, who believed the puppeteer, went into the room. But as soon as Pinocchio went in, the puppeteer locked him in the room. Poor Pinocchio was very, very sad and was crying. <laughs> what a big mistake I've made! I spent the school money! I also disobeyed my father, so now I'm in trouble! What am I going to do now? <laughs> a good fairy that saw Pinocchio crying with regret entered through the open window and landed on the table in the room that Pinocchio was in. With her magical wand, sparkling wings and blonde hair, she was a beautiful fairy. Ooh. Hi, Pinocchio. Don't worry, I'm going to save you. But first, you should tell me everything that's happened. But don't forget, you must tell me the truth. Um, my dad gave me money to come to the circus, but out of nowhere, a man locked me in here. Pinocchio, whose nose suddenly started growing, was in shock. Oh, what's going on? I told you that you need to tell me the truth, Pinocchio. If you lie, your nose will grow even longer. Pinocchio apologized and told the fairy the whole truth. His nose immediately turned back to normal. Pinocchio, you regret disobeying your father. Now I'm going to save you from here and give you back your money. Don't make the same mistake again. You're such a good fairy. Thank you very much. I promise I won't do it again. It was my mistake to enter a circus that mistreats animals in the first place. I'm so ashamed. The good fairy unlocked the door with her magic wand and took Pinocchio out of the circus. Pinocchio went on his way, singing as he headed to school. La 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 As he delightfully walked down the road, a sly fox and a crow appeared before him. What kind of a kid is this? He looks really foolish. He probably has money in his pocket, too. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to school. Well, you don't have a notebook, pencil and a school bag. How can you go to school? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but my money is in my pocket. I'm going to buy them with this. The fox and the crow looked at each other and started laughing mischievously. <laughs> this is the person we've been looking for. We can trick this dork easily. Oh, this is such a small amount. You can't buy all of them with this, but I know a shop where everything is half the price. If you want, give us the money. We'll run and get all of them for you in a snap. Plus, you'll have some money left over too. Oh, really? That would be great. Thank you so much. You're such great friends. Okay. You sit under this tree and wait. We'll go and bring you what you need. Pinocchio gave all his money to the fox and crow, sat under the tree and waited. He waited, waited and waited. After a long time, Pinocchio finally realized that he had been tricked. He was thinking sadly about what to do. Suddenly, the good fairy appeared before him again, fluttering her wings. Haven't you gone to school yet? Why are you here? I hope you don't forget the last time. Please tell me the truth. Ashamed of having his money stolen, Pinocchio lied again. Uh, I dropped my money out of my pocket. 
Pinocchio, whose nose suddenly started growing, was in shock again. Oh, whoa! I told you to tell me the truth, Pinocchio. If you lie, your nose will get even longer this time. Pinocchio apologized and told the good fairy the whole truth. Once again, his nose turned back to normal. Thank you very much, but I still don't have any money to buy a notebook, pencil, and a school bag. I'm so embarrassed. Since you've told me the truth, the money is in your pocket. But don't lose it again. As Pinocchio was walking and singing on his way, he suddenly came across the puppeteer from the circus. As soon as he saw Pinocchio, who ran away from the circus, he started to chase him. Come here, you little naughty puppet! Pinocchio, while escaping with fear, tripped on a stone and fell straight into the sea. But because he was made out of wood, he didn't sink. As he moved his hands and feet in order to not sink, he realized that he was swimming. He liked it very much, so he swam, swam, and swam. But that day, the sea was very wavy. The waves dragged him very far. He was so far out in the sea that he was sleepy from exhaustion, and since he didn't sink, he comfortably fell asleep on top of the water. When he woke up, he found himself in a dark place. Hey, what's happening? Where am I? What is this place? Ew! It smells awful. As his eyes got used to the dark, he realized that he was now in the stomach of a large whale. It turns out that a big whale had swallowed him. Geppetto was worried sick about Pinocchio, who still hadn't come back home. He went out to search for him. He asked everyone he came across. Have you seen a small wooden boy pass by? He came all the way to the seashore and asked the fisherman. About an hour ago, a kid fell into the sea around here. He may be your son. Please give me a boat. I'm going to go out to the sea. I need to find him. The fisherman gave him a small boat. Geppetto got in the boat and sailed out to the sea. Pinocchio, my son! Pinocchio, where are you? The small boat couldn't fight the waves, and when it capsized and flipped over, Geppetto fell into the sea. The whale that had swallowed Pinocchio also swallowed Geppetto. He also didn't understand where he was in the pitch darkness. But Pinocchio saw him and started crying. <laughs> father! Father! You found me! I was so scared! <laughs> Pinocchio! My son! My son! Forgive me, father! I will never disobey you again! <laughs> okay, Pinocchio. We'll talk about this at home. Now let's search for a way to get out of here. Father, I'm going to try something. I hope we succeed. Good fairy! Good fairy! Can you hear me? The waves carried his voice all the way to the good fairy's ears. My God! This is Pinocchio's voice! The fairy flew towards his voice and appeared inside the whale's stomach where they were. Pinocchio, you are truly regretful and I will help you one last time. When she touched them with her magic wand, they found themselves at the shore. After that day, Pinocchio became a very smart kid. He always listened to his father. He was going to school and helping his father just like the old days. The good fairy tested Pinocchio from time to time. She knew that Pinocchio did not lie anymore and that he always listened to his father. She said, now is the perfect time. And one night, she turned Pinocchio into a real child while he was sleeping. 
The next day, when Pinocchio woke up, he felt a little strange. His heart was beating and he felt blood flowing throughout his body. He was no longer made of wood, but was a real child. He ran straight to his father. Father! Father! Look how much I've changed! <laughs> my God! My prayers have been answered. I now have a real son. After that day, they lived happily ever after. Pinocchio was now a child to be proud of. Come on! Download our game now! Collect the apples and create your own Snow White style! The weather was very nice. So Mia and Gerda went to the lake for a picnic. Mia's loyal dog, Poppy, went with them. This is a wonderful place! There are beautiful blackberries down by the lake. Shall we pick some? I love blackberries! The two friends went to gather some blackberries. These are beautiful! Just then, they heard a crying sound. They looked in the direction where the sound came from. They saw a white swan sobbing in the lake. Beautiful swan, why are you crying? I am not really a swan. So what are you? I am the princess of a faraway country. The witch turned me into a swan. How can that be? She kidnapped me so I could be her servant. When I refused and dumped a service tray on her, she turned me into a swan and left me here. Mia and Gerda felt sorry for the princess. There must be a way to turn you back. What if you cast a spell using magic, Mia? I'm trying. But I can't break the spell. Ah. There is actually a way. The magic stardust has to be poured into the lake so that it can turn back to myself. Did the witch say that? Yes, and since no one can find the stardust, I will be a swan forever. This is so sad indeed. I know where to find the stardust. Really? Where? In the dark cave in the green valley. Let's go get it. But the green valley is far away. How are we going to get there? Wasting no time, Mia performed a magic ritual and a beautiful horse with a white mane came out of a colorful prism. Here we go. Oh, wow. You are the best. <laughs> The tattletale crow flew to the castle and told the witch what he heard. So they are going after the stardust to break the spell I cast on the princess. Well, I won't allow it. The witch got on her broom. Take me to the dark cave now. Meanwhile, Mia and Gerda came to the entrance of the dark cave in the Green Valley. Are you afraid? No, Mia. I'm not afraid when you're with me. Let's go in then. Mia, Gerda and Poppy entered the dark cave. There you go! Wow! What a magnificent cave, but it's so cold in here! Mia, Gerda and Poppy continued walking.
until they reached a small chest. The artist is in the chest. How do you know? Gerda, I used to be the Snow Queen, as you may recall. Oh, the chest is locked. The Stardust is in this bottle. Wow, it looks marvelous. Just then, the Wicked Witch appeared inside the cave. I'll never let you turn the swamp back into a princess. Watch out, Mia! Mia immediately cast a spell to stop the witch. You think you're gonna stop me with that? As soon as Poppy saw the bottle fall into the lake, immediately jumped on the ice and took the bottle out of the water. Well done, Poppy! Quickly, let's run! But before they could escape, the witch cast another spell, shattering the ice curtain between them. <laughs> Did you think it would be easy to escape from me? <laughs> You're going to freeze now. <laughs> no! Come on, beautiful horse. Get us out of here quickly. The witch managed to get out of the cave, got on her broom and went after them. Fly quickly! The witch is after us! Come on, come on quickly! The wicked witch was trying everything in her power to catch the kids! Oh no! We'll fall into the pit! Come on beautiful horse, jump! But the witch had no intention of letting them escape. Mia, the witch is coming! Now I'll show the wicked witch. Ouch! My head! What happened to me? We got rid of the witch! Hooray! <laughs> Finally, they got to the lake where the swan princess was. The princess was delighted to see them. Were you able to get the stardust? Yes, and you can turn back into a princess again. A colourful spectrum suddenly appeared over the lake and a beautiful princess with long blonde hair came out of it. Wow, you're so beautiful! The princess was very happy to be freed from the witch's spell. You saved me from being a swan forever. Thank you very, very much. But how will I get back to my country? Don't worry. The white-maned horse will take you home. That's awesome. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye. So the princess got on the horse and went back home happily. Winter was finally over and spring was here. Mia was very happy to start the day listening to the chirping of the birds. Good morning, Grandpa. You're up early. What are you doing? I'm making you a kite for the kite festival. <coughs> Yippee! How exciting! I want to attend the festival. There is also a grand prize in this year's contest. What is the grand prize? A grand prize is a unicorn. Is that so? That's awesome! Her grandfather promised to make the best kite so she could win. Mia! Magic again? Grandpa, I was once the Snow Queen, remember? <laughs> Someone else was also getting ready for the kite festival. 
the Wicked Witch. I must win the kite contest. The unicorn must be mine. Why do you want a unicorn? Because I'll tie him up to my gorgeous carriage. Having a unicorn drawn carriage will be amazing. But you don't have a kite. That's easy. <laughs> This is very beautiful! Black, just like me! No kite can go higher than mine. I'll definitely win! My kite flies perfectly! Woohoo! Thank you, Grandpa! <laughs> I'm sure you'll win the contest. But remember, no magic in the competition! While Mia was flying her kite, the tuttle-tail crow that was passing by saw her. Ah! Mia made a kite! Hmm, that means she'll participate in the contest too! Her kite is very cool! The witch doesn't stand a chance against Mia! The crow flew straight to the castle and told the witch what he saw. The witch was furious. So she has a kite and it's beautiful, huh? Winning will be harder if Mia enters the contest. I must stop her. Yes, yes, otherwise you won't win. You will do this job, Crow. That evening, Mia went to bed early. So the Tuttletail Crow entered through the window. <laughs> Here, here's the kite! <laughs> when Mia woke up in the morning, she noticed the broken kite on the table and was very upset. Oh no! I wonder who did this? These are the crow feathers. Hmm, this means the evil witch is behind this. Well done, crow. You finally did something right. Mia can no longer be my rival. I deserve a prize! Give me walnuts! Away from me! Now I have to prepare for the contest. Mia and her grandfather thought of a solution, but there was no time to make a new kite. Don't be sad, Grandpa. I'll take care of it. I can't allow the witch to get the unicorn because she'll mistreat him. <laughs> Here goes! Finally, the kite festival had begun. Mia was very excited as she waited for the contest to start. I hope I win the unicorn. How wonderful would that be? I believe in you. You win. Finally, the competition started. Well done, Mia. Go ahead. Ah, higher! Only Mia's and the witch's kite remained flying. No matter how hard the witch tried, she couldn't get her kite as high as Mia's. I can't go higher. I have to do something. I'll cast a spell while everyone's looking up. <laughs> the witch immediately cast a spell and a huge storm cloud appeared. Yes! <laughs> My kite is soaring high. 
The witch cast a spell, but I'll beat her anyway. Mia's kite caught up with the witch's kite and rose higher. The witch was furious. She has passed me again. Go tear that girl's kite now. I can't get that high. I'm only a crow. What? If you don't want to turn into stone, do what I say now. The crow flew out of fear. And pierced Mia's kite with his beak. The kite started to descend rapidly. Okay, I'm passing her now. Come on, Cloud, blow more wind. However, the witch was so eager that her spell created a gust of wind out of the cloud, sending the kite high, taking the witch with it. Hey, what's happening? Help! Save me! Stop that cloud! Oh, oh, the witch lost. I should go. The cheating witch got what she deserved and Mia won the contest, becoming the owner of the unicorn. Hello, dear. I will take care of you. You can live free and happily on our farm. The unicorn licked Mia's hand lovingly. They all returned home happily.